Welcome to today's webinar. We're going to go ahead and jump right in and get started. So now, right off of the bat, here we see a number of important laws relative to achieving compliance with federal rules and regulations. Now, before I get into the substance of the laws listed out before you, um, just briefly, um, for those of you who have never attended one of my webinars, I'm not a slide reader, uh, so I try to go in order down the slides and through the bullet points, so there is a method to my madness, um, but really the slides are more of an outline for my purposes or for what I see them as being, so we'll just keep that in mind and then um, move forward with that in mind. Now, the code sections you see in front of you of those, and those are this is this is the law. So when we talk about the hierarchy of um, what, what it is you're trying to do in terms of compliance, due diligence, and reporting, this is the foundation of why it is you do or you're being told to do what you have to do, essentially. Uh, and so each of these code sections, the Internal Revenue Code sections, um, delineates those responsibilities. And then from there we have publications and revenue procedures and treasury determinations and all that fun stuff, uh, form instructions that help provide additional information to help you do your job. The bottom line is that, um, and this is really important, especially this time of year, because in a week or so, uh, IRS proposed penalty notices are going to start going out. Now, uh, some of you listening in may be dealing with those on a regular basis. Um, others, this might be the first year you get them. But the bottom line is when you're dealing with the IRS on any level, an audit, proposed penalty notice, uh, what have you, you need to um, cite to the law. And this is the law. And so, and then you show how the facts and circumstances of a situation apply vis a vis those laws. And so whatever you're doing um, for being updated on the law and changes in the law, it's important that you understand it all flows back to most of these code sections for today's purposes. I say most for today's purposes because even though 1441, you see the fourth code section down, comes into play tangentially, and FATCA does as well, um, it's really on the fringes of today's discussion. And, and what we're really talking about today when we get to that um, 1099 miscellaneous filing is weeding out those types of payments because those are very, very different in terms of reporting. Those involve, um, especially the 1441, you're talking about forms 1042, 1042S, um, and FATCA as well. And so even though in the context of FATCA, we're still dealing with U.S. persons, we're dealing with their accounts abroad um, and payments to those accounts abroad. So that's, that's a very different thing. Um, so with all of that said, let's go ahead then and move forward. And there's been a whole slew of new changes in the law. Um, the IRS has been very uh, busy this spring and summer. Um, and so and to that end, first off, and again, I know this isn't a topic that's part of today's content, um, but given how many you know accounts payable and tax pros are listening in, I'd be remiss if I didn't remind you, or if you don't know, then please listen up, that the IRS spent June and July updating and revamping every single form W-8. So we have brand new forms, W-8-B-E-N, W-8-B-E-N-E, I-M-Y, E-C-I, and E-X-P. That means new compliance requirements, potentially new filing requirements, and your need to update your staff and policies and procedures with the tools to collect and validate these new withholding certificates so that your 1042, 1042S reporting's not flawed next year. Now, okay, with all that fun stuff freaking us out, let's just step back from that and go over some recent changes in the W-2 slash 1099 related um, compliance and reporting laws that are also having a big impact on how you do your job. So one of the big things is enforcement's way up, okay? And the IRS has repeatedly iterated that yet again on January 10th, the National Taxpayer Advocate, and then the IRS data book that was released in March both are really um, hitting hard on this argument and this position that, yes, the budget's been cup, cut, um, but the IRS has reallocated uh, resources within the budget that um, is making the enforcement part of things go through the roof. Um, to the extent that if you're a larger filer, and that means someone uh, in organization uh, with, with merely um, you know, at least $20 million in total assets, um, you're an organization that's part of a group that's being audited at a nearly 80% rate. And if your organization has even $5 million in total assets, they're being hit, you have a one in three chance of getting audited year over year. 
And so you really need to be careful um, this year with your due diligence compliance, and you really need to be careful with those forms 1099 miscellaneous. Um, and in addition, you also need to be careful because early this year the IRS announced it's more likely than ever that when you file, you're going to be penalized for minor 1099 errors.